Once upon a time, 3-0. and Now, 3-7 and since being 3-0. and They've lost three. They, they've only won three of their last ten. They have not beaten a team based on current winner percentage above 500. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Ian Rappaport, take it away. Rich, there's one thing that is very clear now for the Dallas Cowboys. Jason Garrett is not going to get fired during the season. It's not something that Jerry Jones or Stephen Jones believe, and they just do not think it's going to help them get to the playoffs and get deep into the playoffs. If they did think that, maybe they would fire him, but they simply do not. Plus, is there really anyone on the staff deserving of the interim title? These are all the questions the Cowboys are kind of going through now, and yes, it does appear to be headed to a divorce. The only way, from what I understand, Jason Garrett could save this would be to make the playoffs, go deep into the playoffs, likely to the NFC title game. Meanwhile, the Cowboys mooch can do some homework on candidates, possibly take a look at Lincoln Riley, Ron Rivera, maybe even Urban Meyer. They can kind of start the process because everyone knows which way this is heading. Mooch, what do you got? Okay, well, now it's time to play with Abandon, presented by Wrangler. And, Michael, you are our cowboy on the set, so we're going to start with Don't you. Don't try Mike. to get me back. Come on. <laughs> Pay attention, Mike. <laughs> any hope? Is there any hope at all well, for this listen, Cowboys listen. team? Listen, um, actually, there is hope because they're still in the playoff picture, and that's all you have to do right now is get in the playoff. But, but – it's, 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 it's ironic. It's, will you stop? Will you stop? That ain't you? calling this play with abandon. Because that's exactly what the Cowboys are not doing. It's like every situation is bad. Everywhere on the football field. They can't. They, they, can't, they, they make the first drive of a game. And then they don't move the ball all game longer. They certainly don't cash in when they get in the red zone. And God. Oh my God. That defense. I don't know what happened to the defense. I don't even know. Who was in those uniforms the other night? Because that defense played bad. So, yeah, there's a little hope there, Coach. But I, they, they have to be losing hope each week they play a game and see well, themselves on And on that's camera. the thing is there's still hope because every week they just say, well, the Eagles are bad too, so we that's have right. a chance in the division. But at some point, <clears throat> that can't be the hope anymore. The hope has to be we're coming together, we're playing better football. To and I don't know what I saw on Thursday because it – it fell apart everywhere, and that's the thing that amazes me is, like, it wasn't just a bad performance by the offense. It was awful by the defense. Especially, I mean, it was everywhere across the board, and you just sit here and go, what's going on? I mean, you still do have hope. Galvanize this thing. Come together. You've got enough players, but you have to play some good football. And right now, Coach, I don't see a lot of hope moving forward because well, they're playing bad football. What? I, got, I, got a lead over I was there hoping that this. Rich didn't show up. No, 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 no. I just want to give you a hug. Oh, jeez. Thank you, Rich. Like you I've been one. going through these, you know, these five stages of grief here. You know, I got a denial. What? I had anger, bargaining, and I've tweeted about my depression, <laughs> and now I'm just accepting it. I've just been going through those stages of grief. Oh Do you have something God. to say in this segment? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say. follow that. I, I don't have five stages of anything. Rich, take it away. Okay, very good. I'm sorry I big-footed that. You just look like you needed a hug. Hey, this week, NFL players are wearing their hearts on their feet as part of My Cause, My Cleats. Visit NFL.com slash My Cause, My Cleats to hear their stories and bid on their custom cleats for charity and to learn how you can follow their lead and volunteer for a cause. And Later today, when the Patriots go on and host the Chiefs, Dante Hightower will be among the players participating in this initiative. Hightower is drawing upon his mother's example to provide for families in need across the great state of Massachusetts. Stern and why? Thanks, Rich. On Friday, Josh Allen told me the moment when his season changed. It was after the week four loss to the Patriots. He had three touchdowns and six interceptions on the season. And he met with Sean McDermott and offensive coordinator Brian Dayball. Right then and there, Josh vowed to no longer play hero ball. In other words, he doesn't have to do all of this by himself. Since then, Josh Allen has thrown 13 touchdowns and just two interceptions. Quite a turnaround. Now, as we go a little bit more bigger picture, I send it back to you, Mooch, with this question. How do the Bills upset the Ravens today? All right, Kim. Well, you mentioned Josh Allen, and we've always said that a young quarterback's best friends are what? A great defense, the Bills are third, and a great run game. 
The Bills are fifth overall. And both of these young quarterbacks are getting better in the passing game. But Josh Allen actually has more rushing touchdowns than Lamar Jackson. Are you kidding me? So, ball control. Keep the Ravens off the field like the San Francisco 49ers did last week. The Ravens only had eight possessions. It's hard to score 40 points with that few possessions. So, that's what they've got to do. Josh Allen has got to have his best game of the year. But you know what? Don't count them out. He's got a chance. And now for more on the Broncos and the Texans, let me send it over to James Palmer in Houston. Well, thanks, Mooch. Rookie quarterback Drew Locke, perhaps the future of the Broncos franchise, won his NFL debut last week, received congratulatory phone calls from both Archie and Peyton Manning. When I talked to him this week, he said week two on the road is exactly the same. Look for spread concepts and him to make plays outside of the pocket with his legs. When I talked to Texan safety Justin Reed, he said this week is very similar to last week where we have to stop one go-to wide receiver. It was Julian Edelman, and now it's Cortland Sutton. Reed also told me they're proud Preparation and focus for that Patriots game is something they want to use to carry them through December. So, Irv, I ask you, how far can this Texans team go? Listen, this Texans team, when everybody's on the football field, can go as far as they want to go. You know, we know about the main protagonist. We know about Deshaun Watson. We know about DeAndre Hopkins. But if they can get Kenny Stills on the field every week. If they can keep Will Fuller on the field every week, these are capable guys that can do damage to defenses. Will Fuller had a 200-yard game in week five, and Kenny Stills had a 100-yard game in week seven. With those two guys on the field, they can go deep into the playoffs and maybe even make it to Miami. Now let's go to Green Bay and Tom Pellisar. Michael, Aaron Rodgers was back in vintage form a week ago, throwing four touchdown passes in the Packers' win over the Giants. Tight end Jimmy Graham told me, you can tell Aaron's playing happy, entering today's game against the Redskins at Windy Lambeau Field. Rodgers turned 36 on Monday and acknowledged this week that he's seen the 18th hole coming up. Nobody can't play forever and only has so many chances to win a second Super Bowl. I relayed that comment to Graham, who said from what he's seen, Rodgers is nowhere near done. Point out how the two-time NFL MVP he can still flick the ball with just his wrist. He'll be in his 60s still throwing like that, Graham said. Now will be out there hobbling on the beach for him. Kurt, are the Packers still among the NFC's elite? Well, yeah, I'm with you, Tom, that this guy right here, I believe, is still among the elite. And we saw that last week in the snow, four touchdown passes. Aaron Rodgers being Aaron Rodgers making those special throws. But if I'm going to look at this team as a whole, and you look at the last five games, they're just three and two. Their offensive scoring is 16th in the league. Their defensive scoring 20th in the league. So I look at this team and I go, what do they do that's elite besides this one guy? Now, that one guy can make a difference come playoff time and can beat anybody, but I don't know if they've got the team to beat anybody. When I look at the NFC, I probably place them fourth. So I'm going to say, no, they're not elite at this point in time, even though they've got an elite quarterback. Another guy that's elite is this guy. He's been elite for a long time. Frank Gore getting ready for that big game against Baltimore. Number three all-time rusher in the history. Well, Rich, it's too early for the players here in the Vikings locker room, but the cleats are ready as part of today's My Cause, My Cleats campaign. Fullback C.J. Hams represents the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. His mother was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Right tackle Brian O'Neill, his cause is Autism Speaks. His older sister has autism. Then there's safety Anthony Harris. His cleats represent the One Love Foundation, educating young people about potentially abusive relationships. And since we're in front of Kirk Cousins' his locker, he's a longtime volunteer for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Lions players have their own sets of causes, of course, as do other players across the NFL on this Mike Cause, Mike Cleat Sunday. Rich? Thanks a lot, Randy. And in terms of making the playoffs, the Vikings currently the sixth seed in the NFC. They have, still have a chance at the division. As you see, they've got a Week 16 Monday nighter home against Green Bay. The path to the playoff basket for the Rams with the division being three games in front of them I've already already lost to both Seattle and San Francisco appears maybe catching the Vikings could be easiest however you see that schedule remaining schedule 
That is a tall order. Now let's send things over to the low zone where the guys will make use of what's in front of them. <laughs> okay, welcome to the low zone, Rich. Okay, yeah, I'm going to start this off. We're going to talk about your Rams making the playoff. Yeah, right. But it's plain for me to see that the Rams have painted themselves into a corner, right? Yep. You can't just flip a switch on offense and turn it on some games and turn it off some sometimes. And you know what? You can't screw around anymore, Rams. You got to get going. Play like you did last year and sometimes this year. And now you got a chance maybe to get back into the playoffs. Well, and I think you said it, coaches. You can't just flip it on and flip it off. And that's why I'm worried about this Rams team and being able to get back into it. But when I watched them last week, right, when I watched them last week, we saw the old Rams. And what I mean by that, it was, it was big plays. Big. Big play, not these little things that you got over here. It was oh, big, big plays. plays. They had 15 big plays last week against uh, the Cardinals. That's right. the most in Her? the Sean McVay era. 15 big yeah. plays. That is what this team Whoa. is built on. They are right. built on big plays. They got to bring out the big dogs. You broke this. Uh, sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry, right. sorry right. Lowe's. I didn't yeah. mean to break you that. Got but they got to bring out the big plays because that's how this team is built. I don't think they can get back on track and – Fix yeah. all their problems, right. but they do have big he's, playmakers. He's, if they can make some big plays, mm, they got a chance he's to use the back same into tools. This. Why did Mike? they get those big plays? Why? Just don't tell the tell people us why. that they had big plays, but tell them why did they get those big plays? I thought that's because what you were they do. allowed Todd Gurley to be the hammer Damn. again. When Todd Gurley is the hammer, he is the one that stirs everything and makes it go. People come up and play the line of scrimmage, and then they go. The top. That gives them a level offense because they're running the ball, Kurt, and they're getting the what's big a, plays, just like you talked offense? about. Really? Offense and what's defense, a balanced balance balance. offense. Balance. They balance. pull it off. Balance. They balance okay. the offense off. And you're right. Long as they lead Todd Gurley as the hammer, they can be a hammer to some other teams. Okay. Well, I think they, they also need to get maybe some new tools. Like, we could... Get some yeah, you've tools. been using the oh, same tools. I know, let's get that, some new tools right, for playoffs. I'm telling right. you, who else is going to need some, some tools? tools. Uh, <laughs> how about Dwayne Haskins over in Lambeau Field with the Redskins? I don't want him a couple. Huh? Look at this guy right here. Where's he from? The Ohio Doom. State Doom. And coming up next, we've got hurry up offense. So hurry up, get your coffee. Come on.